to front court, lost the ball though, and the Racers can get a run out. It'll be Sapp taking it to the hole and jamming it in. Missed the layup, but Farrell grabs the rebound, shovels it to Williams for the stop. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm. Dave Winder here in the brand new Race Center on the campus of Murray State University. And coach will join us in just a moment. But first, let's tell you what happened last week. The Racers got two big wins against Bethel and Western Kentucky, and we're going to break them down with Coach Prohm here in just a minute. And here's what's coming up for the Racers, beginning with Saturday as the Racers get through finals week. This week, they don't play until Saturday. And it's a 1 o'clock game at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, streaming video will be on go, go, uh, purpleaces.com and we will be tipping that off at the Ford Center at 1 o'clock on Saturday so hopefully a lot of racer fans will make it over for that and then the following week make your plans for back-to-back -back home games as the racers take on Alcorn State on Wednesday December, December 17th that'll be a 7 o'clock men's only tip there and then on Saturday the 20th a week from this Saturday it's a double header the women's uh, team at Murray State will play Jacksonville at 1 o'clock, and then the Racers men's team will take on Illinois State at 3 o'clock, a doubleheader at the CFSB Center as the Racers get going and finish up the first part of the season. And that will bring us to our time that uh, we enjoy every week with head coach Steve Prohm as the Racers are coming off two big wins uh, this past week, the tune-up game against Bethel and then the big win 93-81 uh, at home against Western Kentucky on Saturday. Coach, you, you were very, very happy uh, in the post-game press conference. Uh, my goodness, that was a pretty good performance by your boys. When you make shots, it mm -hmm. uh, makes things look a lot easier. But yeah. I thought our one of what we did, I think our guys shared the basketball. I thought first half, uh, they were really in tune into the game plan, what we needed to do. We were able to turn them over, uh, force them into some tough shots. They shot a good percentage, but we rebounded the basketball well. Uh, especially on the offensive end, but we made shots, uh, were able to extend our lead to 22 at one point. Didn't finish the half the way we need to because they mm -hmm. cut it down to 17. We've got to keep that lead or extend it those last three, four minutes. I think that's something that's hurt us uh, this year, early in the year, uh, but we're getting better uh, from that. So we'll continue to grow, but it was a great win, but it, that's all it is. It's one win, that's right. and now we got to get back on the practice floor this afternoon. Well, we're going to head, go ahead and uh, roll the tape here and uh, take a look at it. Uh, we were very happy to have our friends from the American Sports Network uh, with us for the first time, and they did a great job with the broadcast. But uh, Coach, uh, early on, I think you guys were down, uh, what was it, six to four, and then, man, you hit them with a, a it was a 16-0 run and uh, just really did a great job with that. Well, we made a bunch of threes. We went inside out. We did a great job of going inside, kicking back out. Uh, Cam with a nice little bank shot there. Uh, but Seymour made some threes. Sat made some. Cam made a big pull up. We were able to get the ball inside to Jarvis. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the lead got up to at least, uh, I think, 22 in the first half. And it was good it did because you knew they were going to make a run. Mm -hmm. I just was, I didn't think it would get as close as it did. Well, this was uh, early on in the game, about seven minutes in. Uh, you see Sapp make the three there. Uh, Coach, uh, you were really taking advantage of turnovers. You were putting a lot of pressure on the ball. You know, a couple of them I thought maybe were unforced turnovers, but it doesn't matter. You get the ball back and you, and you take care of it, and you see uh, Seymour hit the three there. The Racers started off uh, five of ten from three-point range, and then uh, also there in the first half, uh, Coach, uh, yeah, Kedrick Flomo came in right here. His only shot of the game, he knocked down a three. Yeah, that's the one thing. You know, he brings some, he bring, he can bring some offense. He can make open shots, and that's what he's got to do. He needs to play his role, make open shots, don't force things when he's in the game. But what I was most pleased with Cameron Payne's shot fake, made a pull up 15 footer. TJ Sapp's shot faked, uh, made a little floater uh, for the first bucket of the game. But our guys shot the basketball well. We haven't done that all season. And you can see, I know we played Bethel early in the week, mm -hmm. but you can see when you shoot the ball well, it makes a lot of other things look better or, and makes the game a lot easier. So, you know, they all shared the wealth between 
the four guards and then Flomo coming off the bench. So the racers led it uh, 49 to 32 at the half and then uh, coach we get into the second half and we were talking at halftime there on press roll that we knew Western would make a run at you and boy they sure did. Yeah you knew they'd make a run I just I told our guys we gave up the same amount of points in 10 minutes that we did the first 20 minutes you know, I think our guys did a good job of to continue to run the game plan on offense and being patient, making the extra pass. Western got a ton of second shots in the second half, and that really hurt us. And we've got to we've got to clean that up. We've got to do a better job in ball screen defense. Those are two areas that they really hurt us. What I was proud of our guys in the Houston game, we didn't respond when they made their run. You know, we kind of we withered down the stretch. This this group today or this group on Saturday, we're up four with, you know, five, six minutes left to go, whatever it was, and, and they responded. Here we are with 10 minutes to go. Uh, Seymour knocks down the jumper, uh, and then Williams to, to give the racers the lead there. Uh, how about Seymour? He came off the bench, 10 points and five assists for you. Well, you look at all the guards. You know, Justin's a, a terrific talent. You know, just a sophomore, going to be a good player for us. But if you look at TJ, Cameron, and Justin, and, and Jeff, those four guys, a ton of assists and not many turnovers, and, and that's a good, uh, good recipe for winning games. I thought this was key, too. Uh, uh, Western got as close as four points, and then Sapp uh, hit two big threes there. Uh, that, that really kind of put it away. Uh, I don't say put it away, but it certainly kind of stopped the momentum they had. Well, it just took the momentum. You know, it, it swung the momentum back to our side. Uh, it was 75-70 big transition three really want our wings to run and kick it up the sideline and Cam did that and then TJ went back to back big threes to extend the lead to 10 and then you saw a minute ago and this is a great play obviously Jarvis and Cam but a big shot we were up eight and um, we were four guards and Jeff made a big 15 17 footer but we got fortunate they got it down to four they missed some free throws they missed a layup you know we had a bad kind of unforced turnover too but you know, throughout the course of the game, everybody's going to miss some free throws. Everybody's going to miss some layups. You just got to right. weather those storms. Well, take a look at the box score, and you see the racers uh, uh, had they had 11 threes against Bethel uh, midweek, and then had 11 threes in this game too. They out rebounded Western 32 to 27, and Coach mentioned I think they had 10 offensive rebounds in the second half. So that means they held them to two in the first half, which was very very good. Uh, and then the racers just uh, you know did what they had to do to win the game. Uh, 93 to, uh, to 81. So coach, uh, we're going to go back in time to the Wednesday uh, tune-up game against Bethel and we won't particularly uh, you know break it down like we did to just just the other game but we'll go ahead and roll it here and just take a look at it. You know coach on Wednesday you guys were coming off the uh, the weekend uh, at the Challenge in Music City and you did have a good result on that Sunday against Drake but Wednesday was very, very important for you guys to, to work on some things and, and to get some things going. Well, we just need to get some confidence uh, back. It was good to get that win against Drake. The Valpo game, you know, if you played him again, you're probably not going to get beat 35 or whatever it was. Right. But Val Valpo is very good. Uh, the Portland game kind of stung us a little bit. We weren't able to, to win that game. But, you know, we practiced uh, this afternoon or the Bethel game for shoot around. Instead of having a normal shoot around, we actually practiced. You guys went at it hard, didn't and you? And we, we usually practice for the first 20 minutes, but we practiced mm -hmm. for the whole hour and a half of our time slot and kept them out there, hour and 15 minutes probably. And we got to get our mentality to change. And so right now we're, we're on day seven and the guys are responding and we got to continue to work and get better. But, you know, this was a good game. These games, uh, they're a necessary evil. Uh, you need them for a lot of reasons, and I know a lot of people hate the games at times. And like you said, it's a tune-up game, but you know it, it, it fits good into the schedule and the way we had it balanced. The two games this year worked out good for us, so it was a good win, and then it got us ready for Western. Well, the, the Racers had a 50-34 lead at the half, and we'll go ahead and uh, put up the box score here. 102-66, uh, uh, the Racers uh, really, I think the biggest thing in this, you look there and the Racers were 11 out of 15 from three-point range, they shot 62% from the field. And, you know, more than anything, Coach, uh, you had three great days of practice, and maybe that Wednesday game was the one that uh, kind of got your shooting touch back. Yeah, I hope so. I hope it's back. And, but you look at the stats from the week, we only shot about 17 threes per game. They don't need, we don't need to be mm -hmm. up in the 25 range. You know, we need to be in that 15, 17 range. And then you just see we made shots, 50%, 63, 83, 63. 
uh, 75. So that makes a big difference. It makes the game a lot easier. It makes, I hate to say this, but it makes you put a little bit hard on the defensive end. Uh -huh. But our biggest thing it, it, offensively is just shot selection and taking care of the basketball, making the extra pass. Defensively, we've got to continue to grind them and get better. And we got to have long, tough practices. That's what we need to do right now. We got to continue to reinstill our culture. We can't worry about being fatigued or getting rest. We need to get after each other and get better. And I think the guys' mindsets are changing to where they understand that we have to practice like that in order to get some results on the floor. You know, you kind of stole my thunder there. Uh, we, we've actually got a graphic for the uh, for the week in, in the stats. And let's go ahead and put that up there, coach, and just let the folks uh, digest that uh, a little bit more. But uh, you know, for the week. Uh, when you come out and shoot 62% from three-point range, that's got to really encourage you. Uh, and then to have 46 assists on 70 field goals, that's, that's really outstanding. And then uh, to throw in uh, only 29 turnovers in the two games, that, that's, that's a good number too. Yeah, we want to be that. That's one I wish was down a little bit. Uh, that's about 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, we need to be 10 or less. That needs to be our yeah. goal, and that's our goal every game. So, but. The offensive stats, like you mentioned, the assists to turnovers, uh, if you look at 46 assists, like you mentioned, on 70 okay. baskets, yeah. that's terrific. And if we can just keep sharing a ball like that, making the extra pass, going inside out, every time we've went inside out this year, I think we've made a shot. Yeah. So that's been good. So excited to really get back on the practice floor. It's a long week with finals week. We're still going to practice every day. Uh, I was going to get out and go recruiting this the first couple days. But just the way our team right now is, we need practice time. We need to get better on this practice floor. And uh, some of our systems will be out a little bit this week, and we'll be here practicing. Tell you what, Coach, we'll take a break here and uh, come back. And I want to pick your brain a little bit more on that, that grind mentality that, that you're working on and what you're doing with that. We appreciate our sponsors on the Race Report with Head Coach Steve Prom. We'll take a break and come back and look at the week ahead as well next on the Race Report. The Racer Report with Chris Hatcher is brought to you by Ruth Brothers Wine and Spirits. Serving you for 50 years, Ruth Brothers with two locations in Paducah, Kentucky. And by Pepsi Mid-America. Share your summer pics on Twitter with hashtag RealBigSummer. And by Campus Evolution Villages in Murray. The best in student living. Call 270-767-1818 to plan your tour and visit. And by Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here. 